and it's really important to check your pH in your soil because daylilies like it a little bit more on the acidic side than on the basic side. Take you around and show you how I check the pH because some of the areas around I have really some hard um, pH issues. Um, I will also do a test for the um, nitrogen and, and phosphorus levels as well, uh, but that's another video. I brought in a whole bunch of just wonderful soil um, here on the property. I brought all the soil in because I tell you, this clay here it used to be a lake bed and um, my first year of digging up daylilies in clay was a complete nightmare. I, I directly went to um, my local uh, dump where they get the, the leaves and the, the uh, green waste and then they till it and mix it and break it up in small pieces. And so what happened is I was able to bring um, those loads in for $20 a load. Okay, so here we go. One of the things you wanna do is make sure do multiple locations in your garden because um, each location um, will have a different pH. The uh, clay here is so bad that I can barely, barely plant grass in it. And it's most likely um, a pH issue um, because I fertilize a lot, which is another video, guys. So stay tuned for that. Hopefully, um, I've corrected the issue, but it takes a long time for sulfur to turn into um, acid. Acid rain, really, and what it's turning into. So let's see if I've done done anything to the soil this year. Last year I did it three times, so at 50 pounds each time, so 150. You'll want to add more or less um, sulfur depending on um, what kind of soil you have. The pH paper I use is is this stuff here and it changes colors from, from red to yellow. So it only cost me $2.50. So buying an expensive um, pH meter, maybe, you know, it's not for everybody, but since I have to do it so often, and I wanna make sure that my pH balance is right for my soil, um, I have opted, you know, to get, get the little bit more expensive one. Um, and also, I can, I can move from area to area, spot to spot, um, with this one much quicker because it'll do it'll do it pretty fast and the water doesn't have to be clear Because um, this you have to let the water stand because it will paper turn colors like a dirt color Okay, so what you want to do is you want equal parts of, of a Soil to water and you want it you want to go down where the uh, Roots are you don't want to take the topsoil because your roots aren't there. So you want to go down two or three inches. Yeah, two or three inches. About an even cup. Put it in my bowl. And then water. Like that. Mix it up. Let it stand. Now, this the, I'm just trying to get a, a base baseline here. I'm not trying to be scientific and it's 6.295 or whatever. I'm just trying to get a ballpark because it's so off. It's just crazy. So you see that? I don't know if you can see that or not. 7.6, 7 7.6. So it's still really high. And the one reason is, is that the water, the water is, is not acidic. It's really basic here too. So what I've done is I brought in a, you know, automatic fertilizer. And all what I do is I add acid to it. So, 
in about 30 seconds, it'll start changing colors. You see it, you see it change colors? See it's a little bit yellow? That means it's seven, seven, Around seven, eight, seven or eight. So it's about right. Well, it's still a little bit high, so it could go down a whole pH level here at this location to get it to 6.5. All right. And I just dump it out. Let's go on to the next spot. So here we go again. This is an area where all the daylilies are just, oh. These, these daylilies are here and they are, yeah, so 12 inches, maybe 20. And then Look at over there. So those are, you know, those are 30 inches. And then you come over here, nothing, nothing. I've been working with the soil. One is I, the, this, these day lilies still have clay around their um, roots. And I still need to, <coughs> probably need to dig them up. And transplant them again. I'm gonna rinse it. I'm gonna just rinse it. I'm gonna dig down. Okay, I'm gonna dig down. Look at that soil. <laughs> nice soil. But pH balance isn't right. Dailies aren't gonna grow as well. Equal parts of the dirt. Okay. Go down a, a hair, about a half a pH. Guys, this used to be nine last year. Nine. Look at that. Getting better. Getting better. So that means these daylilies, it's not the pH. So we're going to have to find out what, what, uh, what. What nutrient that they're missing? Well, this is interesting. It's not the pH here. Well, <laughs> I can tell you why the daylilies here aren't doing very well. Look at this. Yeah. That's not good. But we can fix that, not a problem. I have to get that piece out. sure it's pointed the right way. Little dot right there. Little arrow saying that it's going this way and it goes that way. Okay. Well done. 
Going through your uh, daily beds and going through your garden is one of the important things to do is make sure your sprinklers are working. Um, always check your soil. You don't know. People ask me all the time, what should I put on my soil? Is it 10, 10, 10, 15, 15, 15? What should you put on? Well, it depends on what your soil is. Is it clay? Is it uh, um, sandy loam? So it's, it's, it's depends, it depends on what your soil type is like and what's in it. So the best way to, to figure this out is to, to do what I do. Um, buy some pH paper, it's not very expensive, $2.50 is all it cost me. Or, you know, do the uh, pH meter. You can just do it more often. All right guys, until next time. All right guys, make sure to check your soil and uh, your pH level of your soil. Um, because each garden is going to be different. Mine is going to be different than my next door neighbor's because he brings in different soil than I, uh, than I have. But I know the clay is the worst. So um, the only way to fix clay is to, is to amend it with a lot of, of organic material. Um, I do have to amend it with some sulfur just because uh, the clay underneath the salts underneath um, that are in clay are leaching up through this nice soil and so I have to combat that. But other than that, um, uh, the garden is looking good, the daily is looking good and I can't hardly wait to start showing you um, what I have around here. So until next time, my This is elemental sulfur. It has a smell like rotten eggs. Okay, the, uh, the orange glass has vinegar in it and it's reading 3.8. And if I put it over here in baking soda, what happens? Oh, isn't that cool?